This is my 2020 GMC AT4 HD. I bought it back in September of 2019 when I was living in Tennessee working at my other job and the truck has served me pretty well since I've had it. We've got about 50,000 miles on it right now, uh, but there has been one issue that has annoyed me since day one and the dealer has more or less kind of refused to do anything about it. Uh, I took it in like at 100 miles, I took it in a few other times and every time they're like, seems normal to us, we don't notice any weird noises. Although I was like, whatever, because the noise was pretty obvious. You just have to go over a little bump in the road, you know, pull out of your driveway, go on a gravel road, and it makes this awful racket in the steering column. Now, until recently, they didn't have a good replacement part to install. They would just kind of put a new steering shaft in. Uh, but in October of this year, I believe GM came out with a new updated upper steering shaft that should, according to what I've read online, fix the noise that this truck has been having. So I went to my local dealer, I picked one up. They're only like a hundred bucks through the dealer. Um, I, I've seen them online for like 80, but you gotta pay for shipping. But this is like the newest updated shaft. That's the end that goes on the steering column. That attaches to the shaft that goes to the steering box. And I believe the problem is right in this little slip area right here, because they need to make this shaft collapsible in case you get in an accident so it doesn't like stab you through the chest. Um, but to make this slip yoke nice and quiet, they must redesign something on the inside because I think this is where the old one would just kind of rattle back and forth in this area right there. So anyway, um, that's the part number right there. I believe this is the newest up-to-date version, or at least I hope it is, uh, of the steering shaft. So we're gonna take care of that, hopefully fix the noise, but also we're gonna be doing just a few simple maintenance items and filtration upgrades that I think every L5P owner should do if you wanna get the most out of your truck. Uh, we're gonna be doing an oil change and putting a new oil filter on. Um, this is a PPE engine oil filter and it has they get a little comparison on the back here. Um, the stock filter will remove particles like to 25 or 30 microns where this one removes five microns and above and it has a larger surface area. So anyway, that's the new oil filter that we're gonna be using and just kind of side by side, there's a stock Delco PF26 and you can see the PPE filter is just a little bit taller. They do make an even bigger one, um, but in order to fit that on a 2020, you have to put their kit on that relocates the fuel cooler pump, I think is what it's called. Basically there's a small electric pump on the frame rail and it sits pretty close to the oil filter. So to get an even taller one on, you buy a, their kit that has the bracket and hoses, which just lets you move it on over to the side. I might do that next time, but for today, we're just gonna be installing this, which is a much better filter than the PF26. Um, I'm also up for a uh, fuel filter change. And this is the stock fuel filter here. It's a cartridge style. It's not awfully small, but um, I don't know the micron rating on these, but I can tell you that these Donaldson filters right here, they are larger, number one, so it'll trap more dirt and it can go longer between fuel filter changes. But also I believe this will trap a smaller particle size of dirt. And this particular one is also a water separator, which means we're not losing any functionality of the stock fuel filter. Now to get this to fit, you need this kit from Fleece Performance that actually comes with the filter. It has this replacement filter head that allows you to run the stock fuel heater module thing that goes up there. Um, it has fittings to plug into your stock fuel lines once you thread them into the body there. It has a port for a pressure gauge if you need to run one of those, which I don't. That's a hard work comes with. Um, the PPE filter and fleece filter kit I picked up from Diesel Power Products. Um, that steering shaft obviously came from the dealership. So we'll get to that. I'll start with the oil change just because the engine's just at the right temperature right now. I want to get it before it cools off. Um, you might be wondering about the step side build. I was hoping to actually get to the dyno today for that, but the soonest I was able to get into the dyno shop is next Monday. So next week, I'll show you guys the dyno results of the tuned, cammed, modified 4.8. Because remember, we're doing a shootout between my naturally aspirated 8.1, which is or was bone stock, was kind of what we're comparing against, to the fully modified 4.8. So smallest versus largest engine of the early 2000s from pickup trucks uh, from GM, very specific there. Um, and we had a similar budget, naturally aspirated versus naturally aspirated. So stay tuned for that. We're doing a dyno shootout. We're doing zero to 60 times, eighth mile times, and just driving impressions, comparing a big torque, big block to a high horsepower, small displacement, small block. So um, stay tuned next week for that. I got a bunch of stuff for Ugly Truck. We're completely redoing the rear suspension to get the thing kind of geared up for like a 
drag week situation. Hopefully that happens. But anyway, first, let's get this maintenance knocked out. All right, so I was just about to add a little bit of oil into the filter just to kind of help pre-lube it and then get some on the O-ring when I noticed there's actually a magnet in the bottom of this oil filter and it's a pretty powerful one too. Like it'll hold the weight of the filter up. So if there's any like metallic particles or anything like that in the filter, it'll just kind of help trap it. So one more cool thing about the PPE filter, uh, let's get the magnet inside. Now let me see if I can do this while holding a phone in one hand without making a mess. Of course, I can't fill this all the way because it's mounted horizontally, but it's a little bit on the edge for the O-ring. Kind of wipe it around there. Just throw them back in the truck. Because there's so little room up underneath these 2020s, it took me about a half hour just to get the old filter assembly out from underneath the truck. Uh, some of the quick connect fittings, those took a minute to figure out how they work. Uh, but once I got that done, the lines popped off. Luckily, a lot of fuel did not drip out, so I didn't have to take a huge bath in diesel. Uh, the electrical connector up on top here, that took a minute of fiddling just to kind of squeeze the connector enough to let it release. Uh, but basically, there's a fuel tank that sits like right here. The DEF tank sits right around. So there's not a lot of space to get your hand up in and work with these connections. But we got it out. I basically had to loosen the bracket from the frame and then remove these two bolts here and take the filter from the bracket. And then I could take that out separate, followed by the bracket. But the new fleece filter head is a little bit slimmer. So I think I can get that all up in in one shot, especially if I don't put the filter on just yet. Um, this is kind of what the old one looks like. Um, nothing wrong with this other than this will provide better filtration. So uh, yeah, let's get it back up underneath the truck.
So I originally tried to get the fleece filter up onto the frame with it attached to the bracket, but there's just no way that was going to happen. Totally not enough room. So I ended up having to take the filter mount off of the bracket. I put the bracket up in there by itself. I left all the nuts about as loose as they could be. So I had enough room to get my hand in between the frame and the bracket. So then when I slid the filter mount up in there, I was just barely able to get those bolts started. But anyway, now everything is tight. It's mounted. The lines plugged in right where they should. Um, the electrical connector plugged in no problem at all. Started the truck up, did a quick leak check, and everything is fine except for where the eighth inch pipe plug goes into the filter mount. Um, I originally used the plug that they provided. It was kind of on the small side, honestly, like it went down in below the surface. So either the hole was tapped just a little bit too big or the pipe plug was just a little bit too small. And I didn't go nuts tightening it up. So I pulled it back apart. I cleaned out all the Teflon. And this time I found a new pipe plug that was a little bit bigger. And I put it in using this stuff here, Permatex Forma Gasket number one. This is actually rated for use with fuels um, and it kind of cures nice and hard. So I figure that'll be a great solution for that plug because diesel fuel, man, that stuff will leak and leak and leak and it'll make a mess. So I think anyway that that'll take care of that. I'll let you know in a minute whenever it dries and after we finish up with the steering shaft. Uh, to take apart the, uh, so first of all, I guess, let me show you real quick. This is the original one. And this is definitely the sound that I've been hearing for 50,000 miles. Uh, and basically there's a, a spline arrangement in here. So this shaft is allowed to, you know, extend and retract, but uh, it's a little bit on the loose side. So check this out. Like, I'll try to see if you can hear the sound actually. So I got probably a degree or so of twist I can put in it and then it even like it'll rock back and forth and it's going to be probably hard to show on camera but definitely that's loose and that's where the noise is coming from. So the new style right here you can see it's like silver and the original one is black. This is the 2019 one and there might be some different versions in between the old and the new one but um, hopefully this will cure all the noise that we've been hearing. To get that out I pop the fender liner. You can probably go uh, like from the top here. You can kind of reach it, but I, with how tall this truck is, it's a little bit easier just to kind of go in from here. I don't know if I can actually, it's disconnected now, but you want to pull the nut off on here and kind of slip the shaft up so it disengages with the shaft that goes from about here down to the steering gear box. And then under the hood, all you've got to do is disconnect that one universal joint. Um, and then just kind of push it down a little bit to disengage with the steering column. Then all you got to do is actually, I learned something new about the truck. I learned that the steering column can actually pull back by about six inches or so. There's just a little lever down here. You flip that and then grab the wheel and just kind of yank it back. And that gives you just enough room to take that, um, steering shaft, pull it down and then just slip it out of the way. So that's how we get to it. Not a big deal. I was kind of worried about that might be a little hard to get to, but um, yeah, pretty simple job. You need a 15 millimeter for the uh, engine bay side. You need an 11 millimeter for the, under the, under the dashboard side. So uh, let me get this back in real quick and hopefully we have nice and quiet steering. Alright, so this road that we're driving down right now is fairly bumpy, the pavement's kind of rough, and normally this is where I would hear quite a few little clunks coming from the steering shaft, and so far, it seems like it's a fair amount quieter, in fact, I don't hear any noises, so uh, here's a good pothole, let's listen. Yeah, I like really don't hear anything. So as far as I'm concerned right now, steering shaft is a success. So first thing I noticed back in the truck out of the garage and kind of into the street, there's a nice little bump right there where the curb is. Uh, truck is so much quieter now. That little steering clunk is gone. And it might be just kind of like the placebo effect, but I feel like it drives just a little bit straighter down the road, which who knows that might just be my head but definitely it doesn't make the noise anymore so i'm happy with that although the trick is going to be how long will it last because i know guys have had replacement steering shafts put in using the old design and it would be quiet for you know a couple of months but then the noise would come right back again so hopefully this newest updated steering shaft from gm is going to fix noise once and for all but we'll find out time will tell 
Uh, so happy with that, 100 bucks down the tube. Uh, totally worth it. Uh, the fuel filter thing, I did want to mention one thing real quick on that though. Um, I think the Donaldson filter was supposed to be a three micron rating, which is really awesome. It does have a water separator, but even though it is a better fuel filter than what GM put in there, you may have issues with your service department when it comes to a warranty issue. I don't know for sure, but like, let's say you took it in and you had a problem with the injectors. This truck has had injector problems before, um, which I think is actually the electrical connector, not actually the injector, but they replace everything. Uh, anyway, if you do take it into the service depart department with a fuel-related complaint, there is a chance if you have an aftermarket fuel filter on there that they may not honor the warranty. They may consider that voided. So keep that kind of in the back of your mind. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the butt later on. Um, although I will say I do have the stock filter. I'm gonna save it just in case we have any problems. So uh, the filter is a pain in the butt to swap out, but I don't know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? We're getting 50,000 miles on this thing and hopefully we don't have any more issues with the fuel system. Anyway, that's gonna bring this video to a close. The truck's ready for another couple thousand miles before we get to touch it again. I just rotated the tires. Um, thank you guys for watching, I do appreciate it. Do me a favor though, uh, drop a comment down below, click the like button or subscribe to the channel. Your choice, pick one out of the three. Either way, it'll help the channel grow. Um, Next time I'm gonna be working on the ugly truck, we're gonna be swapping out the torque converter. Uh, that's been something that's been on my plate for a long time. I've just never had the time to do it. So we're gonna start on the converter. Hopefully that'll help that big S480 turbo spool up quicker. And then we'll tear into the rear suspension. We're gonna dyno the step side next week too. So we've got a bunch of cool stuff headed towards you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.